Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. As the Niger Delta region of Nigeria braces up for the release of the waters in Lagdo Dam from Cameroon, averting another imminent flood disaster becomes a major concern of the federal government of Nigeria. It will be recalled that last year, precisely on November 2, 2022, the Federal Executive Council approved 260 billion naira as variation sum for the repairs of four sections of the east-west route damaged by flood. Nine months after, it appears nothing has been done, despite an additional earlier approved sum of 246 billion naira, totaling 506 billion naira. Arise correspondent Vietemi George visited some parts of Delta, Bayesa, and River State axis of the east-west road, where the fair portions have now become travelers' nightmare. This is a long stretch of vehicles stranded along the Olokobo Okobe axis of the East West Road in River State. The 2022 flood is taking its toll on the Trans Niger Delta Road, where tankers were falling and commuters forced to abandon smaller vehicles for trucks to take them to their various destinations. Many were trekking the long distance out of the rising flood waters. It was a personal experience joining them to wade in the water on October 13, 2022. On November 2nd the same year, a Federal Executive Council meeting presided over by former Vice President Yemi Oshibajo gave approvals concerning work on the East-West Road. Got approval for the variation order in respect of the repair works on the East West Road project affected during the recent flooding occurrences in the Niger Delta, sections 1 to 4, from Wari to Portacot, Eket Oron, including Oron Eket Bypass, uh, in the sum of 260 billion, thereby increasing the total contract sum for the outstanding sections 1 to 4 of the East-West Road projects from the sum of, uh, formerly of 246 billion, uh, now to 506 billion. Today, there are no visible signs of repairs on the flood-ravaged portions of the East-West Road. It is a devastation of monumental proportions here at the Okobe axis of River State linking up to Bayelsa. But nine months after the flood, the federal government is here to do any work here to fix the east-west road. Quite important to the people because it links the states of the Niger Delta and even beyond. And these are relics of failed promises by the federal government. I sight some young men attending to a broken down vehicle along the Trans Niger Delta Road. Last year, we they sleep here every day. We they sleep every here day every day, day and night. We they sleep here. This year, the flood they come. Even the one where the flood distresses them, they don't want to do anything. The roads this poor, they don't even they pass here. See now, motor don't break down for here because of the road. On the sake of the road, I beg, we beg the government, may they try to do this road. Since the last year flood, they have not done nothing. They have not done anything concerning this road. We sleep here day after day, week after week. We are driver. This is our route. We don't have that confidence of driving home every any time. Because trailer can fall from nowhere. Last flood, lives we are lost, properties we are lost, and there was this promise that they are going to fix the road, and the flood is coming again. It is an appeal I am making that the federal government should do something about this road. At the peak of the flood, the Ume axis of the east-west road was also submerged, leaving travelers with no other option but canoes to ferry them to dry land. Nine months after the flood, the road is now worse than its former state. Coming from Bayelsa State, 
or from Delta State, the Ume Junction axis of the East-West Road is gradually becoming the traveler's nightmare. The East-West Road completely. Hi, now die, we are suffering. Four, five kilometers from here now, you meet a bridge. That bridge cut into two. Look inside that bridge, you go see motor paths. Plenty of vehicles don't sink enter inside that place. Rescue team don't come there. People don't die for that place. Eh? Now, um, some rescue van and towing van, they use there and make money. They'll just wait, make vehicles fall inside that dish before they'll go, go, they remove. People die there. I beg the government should help us. If the flood come again, I'll be seeing a disaster. Nowhere to pass. We go hang for here. And if we ask for you, nowhere to pass. But that book will suffer. Because most times, if we ask you ask for you, that side for our order, you go see hang. At the hang, but that people not get food. And when they give their food at times, they not get food. It's a shame that this is the only road that is connecting the oil producing uh, 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 state of, the, of, the, of Nigeria, the mainstay of Nigeria economy. And it is left in this deplorable situation, making people to spend day and night in this place without any intervention. I'm calling on Mr. President and every Niger Delta Ministry, NDDC, all the intervention organizations to come speedily and work on this road now. A falling truck here aptly captures the worsening state of the East-West Road over nine months after an approval by the Federal Executive Council evoking questions about the original status or even whereabouts of the 506 billion naira approved by FEC in November last year. But in the meantime, concerns are mounting following the opening of the Lagdo Dam by Francophone neighbors Cameroon. So what would be the fate of people of Rivers, Bayelsa Delta and other states using the east-west road if and when the flood eventually comes. Of Yetime George, Arise News. Turning us now. Turning us now on the morning show as we discuss the East West Road commercial and economic importance and the consequences of another flood despite the fulfillment of awarded contract for repairs of the road is Wakede Davidson Ere, Director, Head of the Department of Climate Change, Ministry of Environment, Yenagua, Bayesa State. Good morning, Mr. Ere, and thank you very much for joining us. Good morning, Mr. Rufai Abati and Oseni. Good morning, Nigerians. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you very much. Well, quickly, earlier this week, there was a national emergency coordination forum meeting, it was called, organized by the National uh, Emergency Management uh, Agency of Nigeria, where the Director General advised all states that may be affected by the release of water from the uh, Lagdo Dam to make sure that they advise their persons to move to higher grounds. And Bayesa was one of the 11 states uh, listed by that uh, DG NEMA that may be affected. Now, what kind of precautionary measures is Bayesa state government taking? Because last year, there were reports that, uh, from the people that they, even the Bayesa state government you know, they did not make any arrangements for the people, and many of them suffered. The second part of it is the uh, report uh, from our correspondent in Bayesa state, Obietime George, indicating that no repair works have been done on portions, first sections of the East-West Road, despite the fact that the former administration had approved money for you know, the project uh, to be uh, undertaken. Although we know one thing is for FEC to give approval, another thing is for the uh, you know, approval to be cash-backed. But what do you know about the East-West Road and what efforts is uh, the Bayesa state government making to make sure that the people of Bayesa do not go through the same kind of nightmare, ordeal, frustration that they faced last year? Okay, thank you. Um, to respond to your question, the first part of it, 
Uh, the state government has made robust preparations. Uh, thankfully, His Excellency Senator Doye Duri uh, created or established the Directorate for Flood and Erosion Control. And since then, since after creation, uh, the agency has swung into action and several canals have been opened up. There is a lot of desilting going on, you know, especially uh, within the Enegua metropolis. Um, I can tell from Igbogene axis down to Lipie, most canals have been desilted. Uh, many roads have uh, culverts, uh, new culverts that have been put in place. For example, the Amasoma Tumbia Road, uh, where three sections of the road were you know, cut off by the flood. Um, uh, we have about three very gigantic culverts that have been put in place, and that has been replicated in different parts of Bielsa State. Bond walls have been created along um, around several communities. Bond walls so that uh, it will prevent flood from overrunning some communities. Uh, those efforts are going on in Bielsa State, and we commend the governor uh, for being this proactive this particular year, uh, because um, it's, it's before the flood is coming and most. Um, um, say canals are being desilted. Having said that, as for the east-west road, yes, it calls for concern um, because um, we have not really seen any tangible, uh, uh, visible efforts, you know, in terms of uh, repair and upgrading and redesigning uh, of the road. We thought that by now, um, of course, as uh, being conscious of the fact that uh, approval was given um, and um, the sections two. Uh, which, uh, of course, Bielsa falls into. Uh, we are aware that approval was given, over 140 something, something billion. Uh, nothing has really happened. And uh, very unfortunately, uh, we can predict. Uh, we don't need a profit. Uh, when the floods come, if uh, on the, uh, the as asphalt road could um, you know, be worn off by the forces of you know, the moving water, uh, I, I just wonder, uh, this uh, particular uh, um, um, roads that um, no action has taken place and there is no impervious asphalt you know, layer on it, I can tell you the carnage, the disaster that is impending, that is waiting to happen. Thank you. All right, Mr. Eri. Now, we're just in that report by Mr. Vietemie George, we had seen that there has been money allocated to the, you know, to fixing of the road following the, uh, it being ravaged by flood last year. Can you give us a detail of what has happened since then? Has there been any intervention? Was the, was the, contract, um, was the contract awarded to a, particular, um, to a particular company? Who was the contractor, if any? What has happened since then? Because this conversation of the East-West Road is not just from the previous administration or from the previous flood. Right from the administration of President Goodluck Jonathan from 2012, 2013, there had been conversations around the East-West Road, especially how pivotal it is to that section of the country. What is happening now? Because we've seen the deplorable condition of that road. Yeah, I can tell you for sure. A um, section two, subsection one, is Potako Tahoda. And um, that section was awarded to Setraco. And the uh, section two, subsection two, is Aoda Kayama. Um, and that section was awarded to uh, Setraco as well. And section three, Potakot, uh, that's a Lemi Junction to Ne, uh, Rivers Junction, uh, River State, uh, was awarded to RCC. You know, so various companies on that we are, you know, awarded these contracts. And very unfortunately, we can say perhaps a contract were only awarded, but I, I, I don't know, perhaps uh, you know, there's a difference between approval and release. We don't know the extent to which federal government has released funds for this company to so, uh, carry out their duties. But I think uh, something is wrong somewhere. And you can visibly tell that no action, nothing is taking place. And the floods are uncomfortably close. So we know the contract, the, the companies, so, you know, to, to, to these contracts we are awarded to, but unfortunately no action is really taking place. And we are concerned, particularly we are expected that by now, not only um, uh, the jobs should have been done according to the former specification, but perhaps a new you know, design, a remodeling of the road should have been done. 
uh, with respect to creating more channels, you know, more um, culverts and all that. That should have been nearing completion by now. So uh, we know those who these contracts we awarded to, but unfortunately nothing is happening. Can you mention their names, please? Those the contracts we awarded to. Um, like I said, Port Harcourt, Ahoda Axis was awarded to Cetraco, and we equally know the value of six, 64.3 billion uh, in terms of the variation and the um, upgrading of the road. And then sec, sub, sub, section two, subsection two, it's Ahoda Kayama, that's the Bayelsa Axis, 144.7 billion was awarded to Cetraco. And then section three, Port Harcourt, that's a limit. Junction to Orne Junction, about 156.7 billion was awarded to ROCC. You know, this, these are very different companies handling different aspects of the road. But nothing visible, nothing tangible is happening. Okay, Mr. Eri, the question now is, the uh, Cameroonian authorities announced that they will open Lagdo Dam. The NEMA in Nigeria is uh, offering advisory to uh, uh, states, 11 states, that are likely to be affected by flooding. And now here you are, as uh, the director, uh, HOD of the Department of Climate Change in Baesta State, now speaking up. Okay, why, why just now? Is this an attempt by your office to make sure that if anything happens, if there's flooding, massive flooding <coughs> in Baesta State, which concerns you, then you will have provided a perfect alibi from the state government end to say that, well, it's the federal government. Why did the states affected by those four sections that were abandoned, that have not been repaired, why did they not speak up before now? Because there is nothing that prevents the state government from having direct access to the federal government to say, this is what we've been facing. This uh, approval has been given since... Uh, uh, November 2022, and there are contractors that you have named that have been there. Is it that the contractors abandoned the site? But there must be institutional uh, mechanisms, you know, to check some of these things. But now coming on television will not prevent the flooding when it comes, nor will it prevent the suffering of the people. Is this your protestation on television part of an attempt to provide an alibi? <laughs> Uh, Mr. Bati, uh, <coughs> Dr. Bati, I, I want to uh, you know, tell you that uh, if you have really been listening to Niger Deltans, it's all over the news. Niger, Niger Deltans have been protesting all along and calling severally. Personally, I've been on different news media myself and calling on the federal government to do the needful, not just concerning the east-west roads, but particularly, there are major solutions that lies up north. The completion of the Dasin Ausa Dam. Because once, you know, that is a major determinant factor of all these floods. How can, you know, this, this is, this is, this is, you know, um, a project that was complete, 82% completed in Shagari regime. And uh, up till now, and we, it, is, it has not been completed. And it has become the bane of a problem in society. All the Niger Delta said, Mr. Bati, this matter is very serious. Have you imagined if the Lagdo Dam should break loose and the dam should burst? Have you imagined what happened? No single land will exist in Bayelsa. Not any place in Bayelsa will exist for somebody to petrol. It's a very serious matter. And I can assure you, the releases of the Lagdo Dam is good. If they don't release and the dam breaks, that means we are going to, I think, we are going to lose a lot of lives. And so um, it is um, important to know that we have been on this um, you know, um, a message. Uh, we have been talking. We have been on the air. We have been you know, reaching out and informing the federal government on this you know, impending danger if nothing is done, nothing tangible is done. Thank you. All right. I, I want to take us back to last year's floods because we saw how um, it impacted by Yelsa State and other states around that region. And now we're here again with the potential of almost, if not, if not an equally devastating flood and impact. What are some of the lessons learned from the last experience? What has been done in terms of the people who were displaced, 
the um, lives that were lost? Have there been any compensations? Because what we're, what we're hoping to avoid are reactions as opposed to being proactive. So what, what sense of proactiveness or um, have you been proactive as a government in Bayelsa State to prevent the extent of the devastation that we saw happen last year to protect your people for the opening of the Lagdo Dam? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, if you talk of lessons learned, I think uh, it's the coordination of the efforts, uh, especially before and after, you know, the disaster. It has made us realize that line ministries and agencies of government, um, we have to plan more synergistically, you know, so this time around, in more concerted uh, manner, a stakeholder engagement is going on, or Ministry of Health, Ministry of Transport, uh, the JTF, uh, the Ministry of Environment, uh, Ministry of Agriculture, all line ministries, so that the, you know, the flood pre preparedness, prevention, and uh, mitigation and response will be given the deserved uh, attention. So I think we have learned lessons, and the coordination will be you know, better than uh, last year, no doubt about it. So I'd like you to be a bit more specific, please, just so that, because part of it is um, information for your people. What are some of the, I know you've talked about a few of your plans, but now directly from what happened last year, because it would be such a shame if the same things that happened last year that were preventable, if it was, you know, there was better planning and coordination, happens or repeats itself again this year. So what are some of the specific things that you did you didn't quite do well last year that you've now put in measures in place for the next, um, for a potential reoccurrence? Uh, you know, flood management, there is also an uh, element of personal preparation. And, um, you know, um, we really have, you know, scaled up advocacy. And thankfully, not just government alone, the civil society space in Bayelsa has been very active the likes of environmental rights uh, action group and uh, you know the, um, the zero waste and all that. There are several uh, civil societies that are added voice to government in you know lending you know a, a kind of advocacy and um, calling the people uh, to um, relocate or evacuate from uh, places that um, could be you know quite prone to flooding. So um, this time around, the message is. You know, prompt and uh, people are, I, I know of some persons personally uh, trying to make plans to uh, move to higher grounds. And we have also undertaken as a state identification of uh, higher grounds and then preparing people to move to such places. So I think uh, it's a um, Bayelsa state is better prepared than last year. Okay, so I'd like to take you back to last year. What happened with the sharing of the palliatives last year for these victims? Because there's a video making mm -hmm. the rounds that they brought out palliatives that got spoilt. What they were supposed to share to the people last year, they didn't benefit, it got spoilt to bring in new palliatives this time around for, you know, uh, what happened as a result of increase in prices here and therefore petrol and all of that. What happened to the palliative last year? Uh, I, I would, frankly, I, I, that is not within my purview. Uh, even though there are very cogent answers you know, that the public is not aware of. And uh, sometimes people tend to blackmail government. And I am a civil servant. I wouldn't want to even speak, you know, anything politics. But frankly speaking, I'm aware that um, uh, it's better for me not to speak. But there are things that I am informed that uh, up till March this year, um, uh, donations were coming in. And uh, up till March this year, April this year, no, donations were coming in. And uh, people, you know, sometimes want to mistake it that they are all the uh, stock that have been there, you know. So if people, if Chevron, I was told, they uh, brought in some things by April, March this year. And, um, you know, people who are mis misinformed, uh, people who are mis misguided, um, you know, having gotten wind of, uh, you know, some materials in the warehouse, you know, broke into the government warehouse and then, you know, you know, took loss into their hands. Uh, sometimes uh, the right information is not within public domain. And I can tell you 
that, um, well, it's not within my jurisdiction, but I'm just trying to clear the air because I have the benefit of the doubt to get that information. Did, did the palliative so, get spoiled? Uh, of course, the Bayesa State government... Did the palliative get spoiled? Uh, yeah, there are, of course, there are, uh, there are some, of course, I was told the, the NEMA boss was on air that some of them got spoiled. Yes. And this so was, he was on air. And this, was on food, and this was food people could have eaten, got it spoiled in a country where people don't have food to eat. Anyway... So put this in context, Mr. Ayre. Uh, well, uh, I, I don't have the I don't have the I don't have the mandate to speak for the uh, by uh, the SEMA boss. Um, I don't know what happened. But that I can't uh, explain. But uh, a few other things have just arrived this year, not long ago. Well, to put to put this in context, uh, Mr. Ayre, you recall that only about four days ago uh, in the Pansia area of uh, Yenagua. Uh, agree citizens broke into the warehouse yeah. to liberate the palliatives uh, being kept away from them, you know, in the face of the rising uh, cost of living. But if that is not under your jurisdiction, maybe it's under another person's uh, portfolio, the one that you are directly responsible for is climate change. You are head of the Department of Climate Change. Yeah. We've been talking about the man-made aspect of yeah. the flooding. That, uh, you know, the dam that has not been fixed. Correct. Uh, the opening of the Lagdo Dam. But what are your thoughts about climate change? How much effort is Bayesa State in particular putting into climate change? And what are the, you know, challenges you face in terms of climate change hmm. adaptation at the local level? Or you think the problem hmm. is also federal? Well... It's not just climate. Addressing climate change is both local and um, national and global. And the uh, Bayesa State is, uh, of course, engaging in all dimensions, at the local level, at the national level, at the global level. Perhaps I may start from the global level. Um, the United Nations, uh, under the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, called for nations with deltas to come up with a framework. And um, among these countries, Netherlands, of course, quickly signed up, um, Egypt, and about uh, six, seven countries. And the Bayesa State discovered that Nigeria was, you know, ha, you know, has not signed up to it. And uh, His Excellency Neto Doedri um, approved that, okay, the, the state, since subnational entities are uh, allowed in some ways to engage, even communities can speak up at the um, UNFCC level. Uh, there is a uh, the role for indigenous people and all that. So the state government decided to go um, in pursuit of uh, a convention to address uh, river deltas. That is actually at the background. We are still working behind the scene. And of course, typical of uh, um, every convention, we have to work with several countries and several institutions of higher learning, like the Colorado University, uh, people from Mekong Delta, from Pakistan. We are in a network now. Uh, Bayesa State has been you know, fronting um, this engagement. In fact, the initial concept notes um, Bayelsa State was key to generate initial concept notes. As we speak, the protocols and the charter for the convention have been developed, and uh, we are reaching out to partners across the globe to ensure that uh, we address issues of the degradation of the deltas. It might shock you to know that um, uh, the Niger Delta region has lost one, more than 1,184 uh, 1, kilometers of land due to um, coastal erosion. And so um, we are trying to, uh, as a government, beyond um, the engagement of the federal government, of course, with issues of um, uh, the Great Green Wall, you can see the passion. And uh, well, we, thankfully, we have the Niger Delta Development uh, Commission and the Minister of Niger Delta. But with respect to climate change, particularly, uh, we, have, we are trying to look at a convention that will address issues of the deltas. We call it the proposal is UN Convention for the Conservation of River Deltas. That is one at the global level. That effort is ongoing. And uh, every day we are holding series of meetings to ensure that that is achieved. 
That is one. Then at the local level, at the national level, of course, um, we have um, um, a network. And uh, the network is, you know, as government, we, we can't do anything than um, um, play advisory role. And um, uh, of course, the federal government is here, the big umbrella. Whatever you say, you, you, you write by way of memos, either in the um, National Council on the Environment, you, we make a lot of submissions. And year after year, when you make your submissions, it becomes just mere recommendations that may or may not uh, be carried out. There are many recommendations that have been approved that no tangible effort have been put in place. That's one. Then at the state level, yes, climate change. Uh, I think there's the highest level of engagement with respect to climate you know, change, addressing climate change issues in Bayelsa State. Uh, tree planting is so much on the high now, and with um, a lot of civil society organizations like um, um, the Trees for Tomorrow Initiative, Pure Green Africa, the Minister of Environment is really addressing the issue of climate. Remember, climate change can be addressed by, both by mitigation and by uh, adaptation. For mitigation, of course, we look at carbon sequestration, and um, we are addressing it by climate. But for adaptation, it's very expensive, climate change adaptation, where especially you have to use structural means to build resilience and coping capacities of our people, you know, creating dikes, like I said, but bond walls, I told you about bond walls, desilting, which right. is actually a temporary measure, but putting dikes and putting dikes and uh, levees and bond walls are quite expensive, but we thank God. Like the Bogoro issue, uh, which I know you are aware of, the government is tackling it. We are yet to conclude the project, but the project is on. So adaptation, of course, is going on, yes. and it's very, very capital intensive, especially given the fact that Bayelsa alone, out of 21 tributaries in Niger Delta, Bayelsa has 13 channels. And when the madness of the sea will occur, it All can right. come inland through 13 channels. Okay. And when upland sources of water will come down, of course, again, you see, via 13 channels. So our problem is enormous, more than any other state in the Niger Delta region. Honorable Commissioner, thank you so much for your time. Unfortunately, we are out of time. I would have loved to engage you further on the ecological fund with regards to how states are managing the resources. As between 2017 to 2022, uh, the federal government had sent 300 billion naira for for states to manage to address ecological um, you know, issues in the states. But we don't have time. Maybe the next time you're here, you can break it down for us as to how Bielsa has spent the funds allocated from the federal government. Thank you for your time.